So it's in my hand. This is the iPhone XR. Now we've done the iPhone XS and the Max, but this is the much awaited phone because this is at a much lower price in the vicinity of about 70,000 plus plus. It comes in various colors. I'm going to show you all those colors. And the one I have in my hand is one of the most coveted, which is red. My personal favorite is that beautiful, absolutely shiny white. But right now we have the red in our hand. Quick unboxing. So again, typical as always, the phone has that big phone out here. You can make out what color it is just by looking at this. And then of course we move in and you have all the documentation. Always is designed by Apple in California. And then you have this that tells you it's product red. Not very many people know why Apple calls it product red. And I will do a story, but product red is all about a charitable organization. A lot of people say, how can they call a color product red? They're not ca calling the color product red. They're calling this as the collaboration and the association they have with product red. And then we move on to, of course, the phone itself. Now I have to say, there is, if there is no other reason for you to think of an Apple phone, then maybe you should just buy it for what it feels and looks like. This is real premium. Somehow or the other, I like this phone even more than the iPhone XS and the Max because of just the way they've put this phone together. First and foremost, the red is that brilliant red. It's not that boring orangey red. The second is the aluminum that wraps around is in the exact same color, but because it's actually metal, when it turns around, it gives you a slightly different hue. And just to give you a little bit of a hint as to that single camera, is that a disadvantage? No, it's not. Because when you look at what all this is capable of, including depth effect, portrait, uh, a bokeh effect, and all the others, it's happening with software and algorithms that are kicking in and making sure that you get almost the same as what you get from the iPhone XS and the Max. So now, of course, the big question that comes in is, should I be buying the 10s, the 10s Max, or the iPhone 10R and actually pocket maybe 50, 60,000 rupees? Well, I'm not going to answer that because still I don't review this in depth for you. I can't answer that, but I will next week. Right now, I'm going to put this back and we're going all the way to London, where surprisingly, Sanjana, who's gone there to actually take a look at the announcement and release of one of the most awaited phones ever by Huawei, is actually claiming that London, London of all places, is not grey, dark, moody and raining, but it's, she's saying it's sunny. Well, yes, Rajiv, I am in London and this is very unlike London weather because the sun is out and bright here. And of course, the beautiful river Thames is right behind me. But I'm here for a very exclusive and a very big launch by Huawei. This is the next in their Mate series. And of course, these new phones boast of the very high-end Kirin 980 chipset. A higher intelligence is what they call it, and that's probably what they pack in because it has a lot of artificial intelligence built into this. But let's check out these phones that are actually supposed to take on the likes of Samsung and probably even Apple. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so I finally have the Mate series in my hands. I'm holding the Mate 20 Pro. There's also the Mate 20X and the Mate 20 itself that have been launched right here. But all three phones have similar design aesthetics. I, of course, have the rose gold variant here, but they have three cameras located at the back in this square-like manner in the center. And of course, the Mate 20 Pro comes with an inbuilt fingerprint scanner right on the screen. Other than that, all three phones come with a very high-end Kirin 980 chipset. These are one of the first few phones in the world to come out with this chipset. And actually, this chipset competes with the likes of the 812 Bionic chip of Apple. But other than that, it has a lot of artificial intelligence capabilities. But let's take a look at all these three phones. What are the specifications that they pack in? And when are they going to be available in India? At a grand launch event, Huawei launched one of the most anticipated smartphone series of the year. Meet the Mate 20. This series comes after the Mate 10 that was largely successful. But the Mate 20 is not alone. It was launched along with a much bigger sibling, the Mate 20X, and the slightly more premium Mate 20 Pro. The designs of the phone are slightly unique with a three camera setup at the back, or what Huawei likes to call the Matrix setup. The cameras are in a four point design at the back. The Mate 20 and 20X come with a fingerprint scanner at the back, while the Mate 20 Pro has an in-display fingerprint scanner. But what went into this very unique and premium design language? 
we can put this camera to the center, which give us the space. We can make that, optimize it to, uh, to achieve the best like uh, the uh, uh, thinness and compactness. So this is how we put that in a camera to the center. And then we have a, uh, a three camera and a flash all together. So there's many elements together. Let's get hands on with the phones. The Mate 20 series comes with a crisp OLED display and as big as these phones seem, they were not too heavy to hold and operate. The glass back makes them wireless charge ready, but there's a twist here that gives them an added edge over competition. The Mate 20 series has something called reverse charging, which means it acts as an external Qi wireless charger and it can charge up another phone that needs the juice just by placing it at the back like this. The Mate 20 Pro comes with enough juice. It has a large 4200 mAh battery and it comes with a supercharger as well that promises to get the handset up to 70% charge in just 30 minutes. The large Mate 20X is supported by a massive 5000 mAh battery. The Mate 20 series comes with what Huawei calls a higher intelligence, the high-end Kirin 980 chipset. This is the highest performing system on chip to date from Huawei and makes its debut with the flagships this year. The large Mate 20X can be bought with this gaming controller which changes it into a complete gaming pad. There is a cooling technology in the Mate 20X which makes this an out and out gamer's phone. But let's come down to the camera on the phones. The Mate 20 sticks to Leica lenses at the back. The Matrix camera is slightly different on the Mate 20 and the Mate 20 Pro. The Mate 20 Pro has a 40 megapixel main camera, a 20 megapixel wide angle camera and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens. And in fact, the Pro has one of the largest camera sensors in the industry. There's also a macro lens feature that gets activated when zoomed in. This can take very clear and sharp images of objects placed as close as 2.5 centimeters from the lens. There is a portrait mode which provides great depth with the help of the Trio camera and there is an AI color video mode which follows the subject and keeps them in color while keeping the rest of the surrounding black and white. There is also 3D face detection on the Mate 20 Pro but this is not the only place the 3D nature of the phone comes to life. This phone, with the help of AI, can detect the volume of objects in front of it and even tell users the calories consumed of certain food items. Hmm, that is smart for sure. But Huawei has also been thoughtful and gone the extra mile and these phones have a waterproof case with which underwater shots can be taken easily. Well, let's get down to brass tacks. The Mate 20 is priced at a starting price of 799 euro for the 4GB RAM variant which is around 67,400 rupees while the premium Mate 20 Pro starts at 1049 euro for the 6GB RAM variant which is around 88,500 rupees. The phones will be available in India in November. And like its predecessor, the Mate 20 also has a luxury variant by Porsche, the Mate 20 RS. It has a customized design and is priced steep at 1695 euro. All in all, the Mate 20 series takes on the latest flagships by Google, Apple and Samsung with high-end specifications and very new shiny AI features. It makes it an exciting series to watch out for. Once it comes to India, we will do an in-depth review. Time now to move on to the next one. This is, of course, our big review. And by the way, before we move into this, may I just say that what Huawei has done with that phone that they've launched in London absolutely boggles my mind. This is real innovation. Lots of things from the way the phone looks, the screen, the specs, the camera, the optics, what it can do. But oh my God, can you imagine reverse wireless charging? If you've got a wireless charging phone and never bought a wireless charger, anybody in the family, anybody in office that has that phone, just put your phone on top of that phone, it'll charge it for you. Isn't that just amazingly out of the box thinking? So well done Huawei, we can't wait for that phone to be with us to review it. And now we were waiting for this and it is with us. This is the Apple Watch Series 4. Now lots of questions about this because this is again a game changing device to do with the eSIM part of it, to do the fact now that iPhones have eSIMs and of course the ECG part, will it work in India? So first what we'll do is I'll take you through this, of course, uh, you know, uh, it's a typical packaging that they have for this particular version, which is the watch comes in this little thing. And then in the box, they give you the strap. And Apple has been very sweet to also give us a, a loop strap, which we'll also show you. But at this present moment, I'm going to take you through the watch, everything that comes in the box, the changes between the Apple Watch Series 3 versus the 4, 
and then we'll come down to all your questions. It's bigger, it's better, and it is revolutionary. Yes, the much-awaited Apple Watch Series 4 has launched in India and we finally have it on our wrist. When it comes to looks, this is clearly the biggest redesign to the Apple Watch since its launch in 2015. The display is 30% bigger than the predecessor and the watch now comes in massive 40mm and 44mm sizes. We have the 44mm with us and it looks beautiful and not boxy at all. It comes with a ceramic and sapphire crystal back which is a big upgrade from the Watch Series 3. We quite like the infography watch face which lets you put more complications on the screen than ever before. The digital crown now includes haptic feedback which makes navigation easier. And you'll know if you have the LTE variant if you see a red ring along the edges of the crown, which we do. Taking calls and making calls was easy and the louder speaker is a welcome upgrade. And now you don't need your iPhone close at all times to enjoy the Apple Watch. We also like the fact that the older Apple Watch bands also fit the new Watch Series 4 so you don't have to throw them out yet. The watch comes with a fall detection feature which alerts emergency contacts. Do note the fall can't be faked. We tried and failed. The most talked about feature of the Apple Watch is its ECG measuring capability. While this feature has been cleared by the FDA in the US, the ECG app isn't on the watch just yet because Apple is still finishing the software. So will this feature come to India? We'll answer that in just a bit. The smartwatch is available in GPS and GPS Plus cellular model and while the GPS variant is priced at Rs 40,900, the cellular one will set you back by Rs 49,900. Rupees. So will you Apple loyalists go for the upgrade? Something tells us you will. So we're done with the review. I've told you everything that we can. But now let's go through the first big question. The biggest feature in this is ECG. It rocked the world. It rocked everybody's mind that now you can have something that you wear on your wrist that can give you a medical grade, FDA approved ECG that can be sent to your doctor. And you can analyze it yourself too because it's not one of those complicated things that will tell you what you need to know. Will it work in India? Lots of people are saying most countries will not get that feature. I am here to tell you, even though I'm not allowed to tell you the date, I am here to tell you the ECG feature is coming to India. They need a small little approval that is, I think, about to happen. So if you're buying this, you'll get the software update right now. ECG isn't working for anybody anywhere in the world, but we will be one of the first. So if you're thinking of this, make sure it happens. All your other questions to do with the eSIM. There's another big question that keeps coming up. If I have an eSIM on my phone and I have an eSIM in this, will it actually work together? Will they sync? If I have two SIM cards, one which is a proper physical SIM card and the other is an eSIM, will it actually sync with both? So lots and lots of questions. I promise we'll take you through all of them in another show. We're just completely running out of time on this one. But any other questions, send them to us, especially on the Apple Watch Series 4. So let's move on to our next story, and this is a welcome back story. Lenovo at one time absolutely and totally dominating the Indian market, then they went away. I've spoken to you about all of this, and I promised you I'm going to show you the two comeback phones. This is the Lenovo K9, and this is the Lenovo A5. Now, one comes in in the 8,900 variety in bracket, the other one 5,900. So interesting phones in two of the most important high momentum markets out here. But of course, the big question, and when I review both of them, I'll tell you at the end of each each of them. The big question really is when a brand as famous as Lenovo goes away and then they want to come back, are these two phones enough of a big bang to come back? The mainstay for each of them on this, of course, is the fact that it has two front cameras and two at the back. And with the A5, it's all about an incredible battery life. What else and did they do enough? Let's answer that. We all love a good comeback story and a year after the Lenovo K8 was launched, the company is back in the festive season with two new smartphones, the K9 and the A5. And they are aggressively planning to take on the likes of the very popular Redmi series from Xiaomi. Do the phones deliver on all the claims? Let's find out. We have to say that when kept side to side, both the A5 and the K9 look very different. The K9 looks more premium because of its glossy, glossy back, which unfortunately is a fingerprint magnet. The A5 looks a lot like the very popular Redmi 6A and comes with a matte back with metal coating. We found both the phones easy and light to hold. The bigger K9 sports a 5.72 inch HD Plus Max Vision display and a resolution of 1440 by 720 pixels and an 18 is to 9 aspect ratio. The A5 comes with a 5.45 inch HD Plus 18 is to 9 display. The display in both the phones is bright and clear and we could see pretty clearly even in direct sunlight. 
When it comes to optics, the K9 offers a lot more at its price point. It comes with a dual rear camera setup which includes a 13 megapixel plus 5 megapixel lens with AI capabilities and a bokeh mode. Even the front packs in the same 13 megapixel and 5 megapixel setup with selfie flash. We clicked some nice outdoor shots and the detailing in the images was pretty good. The A5 comes with a 13 megapixel rear camera and an 8 megapixel selfie camera and it also does the job. But the K9 camera is much better. Let's talk about the juice factor. The K9 has a decent 3000 mAh battery while the cheaper A5 has a huge 4000 mAh battery which gets a big thumbs up from us. While the K9 sports a USB type C port, the A5 comes with the standard micro USB port. So is there enough performance power in these comeback phones? The entry level A5 is loaded with a MediaTek MT6739 chipset paired with 2GB or 3GB RAM options. The K9 comes with a better MediaTek's MT6762 processor with 2GHz clock speed. Multitasking and browsing was fast and there wasn't much lag in gaming. Both devices run on Google's Android 8.1 Oreo operating system and barring a few bloatware apps like Sonic Runners the Game and UC Browser which can be uninstalled, the UI is easy to use for an Android user. The price here is the deal clincher. The Lenovo A5 is priced at Rs 5,999 for the 2GB RAM plus 16GB storage variant, while the 3GB plus 32GB variant will be made available for Rs 6,999. The Lenovo K9 can be yours for Rs 8,999 for the 3GB plus 32GB variant. So what does the company have to say about these two phones? You know, uh, talking about the K9, we bring, just uh, uh, in the launch event, we bring the the first AI called cameras to the market. That means we have a dual uh, rear cameras and dual uh, front cameras. And with uh, both of the dual cameras, we have very powerful features. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I think, the most attract attractive part for the K9. The Cell Guru verdict. So what do we think? Well, with the K9 and A5, Lenovo makes a strong comeback in the Indian market. And both these phones are solid contenders in the sub-10,000 price segment. Some good camera specs, great build and looks make these phones great budget options and may even give competition to the Redmi series.